This is Rebecca, the Steampunk Planner. I have my coffee in hand because I am swatching my new inks and I can't wait to show them to you. These inks were purchased on Fountain Pen Day through Atlas Stationers and the Goulet Pen Company. They are the closest to me and I was able to get, if not free shipping, a decent um, pricing for my shipping. The pen I am using is my Estabrook Esty Winter White that I received for my birthday. It has an imperial nib and a reverse grind by Kirk Spear. It also has Dimine's Celadon Cat in it. If you're not sure what day Fountain Pen Day is, it is the very first Friday in November. It's not a date, it's a day, the very first Friday. So I'm going to start with my collection with Wearing Yule I purchased from Atlas Stationers, and this is Don Quixote. This ink is beautiful. Wearing Yule, just as many other companies, has different types of ink styles, I guess, is my you could say ink genre, maybe, but they have beautiful, when their ink samples show shadowing, their shadowing is gorgeous. When it shows shimmer, it is gorgeous. When it shows matte, it is gorgeous. So I definitely recommend you getting at least a few wearing yolds in your collection if you don't have that already. they You will find them in many different shops. So I will put Atlas Stationers and Goulet Pens below for you to take a look. Don Quixote is a wonderful ink to write with. It is not overly wet. It is not overly dry. How do I judge whether an ink is wet or dry. It's not, does it ripple the paper? I have a specific way of writing. And by the way, this is my glass nib pen that has a rounded end to it, which allows me to do these blot swatching. Back to talking about whether it's wet or dry as I work with Wearing Yule's The Plague. I do not press hard on my papers, whether I'm using my Sarasa or using my fountain pens. I am not a heavy writer, is what I call it. Um, when I say heavy writer, I'm talking that when you turn the page, if your page is grooved, you're a heavy writer. When it comes to fountain pen writing, I don't like to press down because it can shift the nib. Also, I can get a different idea of how the ink is going to work because of how I'm adding pressure to the pen itself. The ink should flow well. Your pen should make it nice and effortless as well as the paper that you're using it on. If the paper has a tooth to it, where which means if you can see texture on it, that it has tooth. And that will cause skipping and uh, scratching with your fountain pen. Wednesday is putting in his little um, notes in this as well. And I can hear my husband coming down the stairs to go grab them. I will say, after doing this swatching, I will probably have more than one fountain pen inked for December because these inks are just totally gorgeous. This is also the first time that I have purchased inks with their uh, ink swatches cards that the ink itself actually matches. We're getting into the autumn night after a thousand years. If you don't want to swatch like I'm doing, those swatch cards are great. Just put them in a book that would hold them and you still have 
something to reference. Apologies that this is out of focus. I am actually going this weekend to replace and update my phone and hopefully that will be a better camera. There is something that I would like to mention. When using inks, and it does not matter what company, but when using inks that have a shimmer or glitter in it, you may find that when you're swatching or even sometimes using the wider nibs, like from medium to your um, broad or snub nose, sometimes you may have to go over it a few times. That is because the glitter can stop the actual pigment of the ink to flow out to give you the color of the ink. That doesn't mean that it's not working. It doesn't mean that the glitter's um, blocking your nib. It just means glitter is heavier than regular pigment of the ink, and so it will lay down sometimes first. Also remember that when you use inks that have multiple glitter colors or a heavier glitter, the more difficult it will be to actually get the true color of the ink. Also, Wearing Yule is not a water resistant, waterproof ink. Most inks are not. There are quite a few that are by specific companies but you would need to be aware that you'll have to clean your fountain pens often using those inks. So if water resistant waterproof is not important to you, enjoy. Metamorphosis. Oh, not only is the word perfect, but the color is really an excellent color with it. I do tend to lean towards colors or inks that do not have shimmer or glitter. I say that, but I do get some. There is one ink that I would love from Dye Mine, which is Medusa, but it has a lot of glitter in it and I just don't know. And I really don't want the fight of, of cleaning my pens. So we'll see if I get that. I have it on my Christmas list. I do believe metamorphosis is going to wind up being part of, definitely part of my Christmas inks. It may go into my winter white pen. I will say that when I purchase more pens, if it's available, I am definitely going to be ordering from Kirk Spear. I found out about him while watching other fountain pen enthusiasts go to the shows last year. And speaking of shows right now, I am hoping to get to one of them in January. It depends on our budget because we are all going into Christmas and that show is not long after Christmas. So we'll get there. I'll let you know if I will be there because I really would like to meet everybody. I hope you don't mind the flares. I'm preparing for my 2025 ink books. Yeah books. Can't wait to show those to you. And this is a good show that this is going to be an amazing shadowing ink. Matter of fact, Don Quixote has already dried. Do you see the shadowing in that and the different colors? It is just gorgeous. And Metamorphosis does not disappoint. It is definitely going to be my main color for December. Sorry, I had to step away for the voiceover because Wednesday was having a hissy fit. Oh my gosh. So we're getting into Geppetto. And if you haven't heard of him, go look up The Adventures of Pinocchio. I actually chose this color because it is a perfect ink combination for skin color. I know you're going to look at it and go... Woman, what are you thinking? But it is gorgeous and it is perfect for what I'm looking for. As for Wednesday, one of these days I'm actually going to record him just sitting there in my room screaming. I don't recommend watching it. <laughs> I think Geppetto is a great flesh skin color. Now I know you're looking at it going, oh my gosh. I also know 
that the colors in this are actually perfect. It has orange and pinks and yellows. It does make a great skin color. I will show you how I'm going to use it in a different video. With all the tests that I am currently working on for my 2025 planner setups, I definitely will be able to show you how I use ink and colored pencils and the array of colors that are in both to be able to create believable skin tones that will work. Back to Geppetto. Now, I do want to mention that this ink shadows perfectly. So, being that, it's going to be able to help me to create dimension in skin in different areas as I paint with it. I, you can see in the swatching how beautiful it will work. Next, I have Ferris Wheel Press. This is also part of the purchase from Atlas Stationers. This is the land of Shangri-La. Yes, I put the ahead of time because it sounds better. I have wanted this ink for so long. When it launched, it sold so fast that I was not able to get it even from Ferris Wheel Press itself. Somehow, Atlas Stationers did have some in stock and I appreciate it because it gave me the opportunity to make this purchase. It is a very deep green with a green gold glitter. It is a fine glitter. You saw me shake it. I wanted to make sure you saw that. It's a larger bottle so definitely more of a shake would be helpful on getting that mixed up. Ferris Wheel Press inks, for the most part, are very wet inks. They flow without issues. This nib I would classify as a medium nib with how I'm holding it. Without any issue, flows. So I definitely will use it in my fine, in my, well shoot, um, probably my Raven, which is a fine, you can use it in mediums and have that glitter show up beautifully. I probably will never use it in my extra fine because I don't want to have to clean that. It is a really, really pretty ink. On a few of these, you've probably seen that I've done these figure eights or infinities. I just did not want to lose all of the ink that was in them. Just me. But you'll see with the swatching how gorgeous that glitter shows up and it's so fine. So here's an overview of or a review of what I purchased from Atlas Stationers. And I'm going to, some of these are still wet, but I want you to see the shimmer that's in them. See here in the autumn night, um, each of them are just gorgeous. The shadowing is beautiful. Shadowing up here in the Don Quixote and then the, the plague. You see the, sh the um, almost rose gold type shimmer in there, it's gorgeous. And even Shangri-La, it has not dried yet, but you can see that beautiful green gold in there. It's gorgeous, it's completely gorgeous. All right, with this adjusted, we are going to go into my purchase from Goulet Pins. This is Shogun. I am opening it from the bottom. I'm not avoiding saying the company. I want to say a little bit about it. Um, first, that label is gorgeous. It is utterly gorgeous and it's on the bottle as well. I do plan to still do a dedicated video on this. It has a beautiful 
copper shimmer and it is a gorgeous penny and see how it's moving itself into the ink it is a really beautiful but fine glitter the name of this company I am going I'm going off of what I have figured I as a child was a Jacques Cousteau fan of his explorations Jacques is spelled the same as on this ink company. A lot of people call it Jackie's. It is Jacques and it's Herbin. So Jacques Herbin, I can be wrong. If I am, let me know down below. But Shogun is gorgeous and I actually do have it inked up in my Raven Esterbrook. Yes, I said I was gonna only use the platinum ink. I had to get this in my ink pen. So, and my uh, Raven needed to be refilled. You know, it got refilled with this. It is a beautiful ink to work with. My Raven, as I mentioned before, is a fine nib. And I am having no issues whatsoever with starts and stops, with not being able to get it to work immediately. And it is gorgeous when the light hits it. It definitely makes me want to go and purchase more of their inks. Right here, I am just trying to copy the signature that is on the label. I kind of wanted to do a nod to the Ink Master that worked with the company to create this ink. I will be doing a more in-depth video for Shogun. I know I've mentioned that before, but I'm, I'm really excited to bring this to you. And it may actually spark something new for 2025 inking and the ink of the month videos. So this is Shogun, and I am going to show you, even though it is still really wet, you can still sh see that copper shimmer. I want to say shimmer copper. <laughs> That's in that ink. It is just uh, unbelievable. And even though it's wet, I wanna show you the back. You can see that as they're still drying, the only shadow, they have not gone through the page at all. And I'm going to go ahead, let these dry, come back, and show you what it looks like on the back. All right, it's been about a week, and I wanted to get back to this real quickly. First off, I want to show you the shimmer on the ones that I've dried in the shadowing. They are gorgeous. But as I said, it's been a week, so I've been writing over everything, and you can see it has not disturbed any of the ink. I have been using the Celadon Cat, and this is Shogun. So I have been writing over top of it, and it actually gave me inspiration to do my own. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you liked my swatches, and it maybe gave you inspiration to get your own.